to spell it. So I was, because of my cerebral palsy, what happened was I had a brain bleed on the left side of my brain. So it affected the right side of my body. And this brain bleed is the reason why um, I, my hand looks the way it does and, and my muscles get tight sometimes. I'm like naturally just tight all the time. So I have to try to stretch a lot. And um, with uh, cerebral palsy too, um, my foot, my like right foot is pointed like outwards, like the opposite way kind of. So I wear inserts to straighten my feet up. And then um, when I walk or run, I can do that pretty well for someone with cerebral palsy, but you can tell I like have a limp, like I drag my right leg. <laughs> so I just was be dealing with these medical issues and cerebral palsy for most of my life. I also developed scoliosis over the years. I had scoliosis when I was a kid, but it wasn't very noticeable. The curve of my spine, so like from my neck down to the middle of my back was like 11%, so nothing too big. But then when I got to like age 17, it shot up to like 75%. And I was just really leaning to the left. My head was tilted to the left, like like that. Like most of my high school pictures were my senior year before the surgery. I look really crooked. And um, I ended up having to go to St. Louis Children's Hospital to have this major back fusion surgery. <clears throat> so what they did was I had to have like a, this, um, the surgery, but before the surgery, I had to have this halo on. And the halo was supposed to like stretch my neck out and back out a little bit before the surgery. And the first day I had to support it all by myself before I was hooked up to like this weight thing that pulled me up. And it was like pretty painful because I had like a pounding headache all day. But I had the surgery and I now have three rods and 27 screws in my spine from my neck down to the middle of my back. The good thing is when I came out of surgery, I like gained like three inches. I went from five foot to five foot three. So I was pretty happy about that, especially because I'm now taller than my sister, Jessica, by like an inch. So that really mattered to me that I was five three. So with that, I dealt with more complications. I've when I went home, I got pneumonia right away and um, bronchitis. And just like it took me like two years to recover from that back surgery, along with my other medical issues that I had from birth and just dealing with cerebral palsy. One of the things that I have to learn to deal with is I do have blood sugar issues. And it's kind of funny, like at first when I got it at age 12, they said I was pre diabetic. But as I got older, especially when I went to St. Louis for my back surgery, they didn't think I was pre-diabetic because it doesn't happen. Like my blood sugar doesn't go as low as it does as it should. And so they diagnosed me as not being pre-diabetic. But I do have blood sugar issues. And one time I did go to the doctor and it's and it was basically due to like me having a small stomach. So like my stomach is two times smaller than the average person. And like if I eat too much and uh, then it will stop at my stomach and just sit there and then I'll digest at once. So then that can make like my blood sugar go low because it digests too fast. Or like maybe like in the heat in the summertime, um, your blood cools off your body. And because I'm so small, it cools off too fast for me. And so I get low blood sugar. So I have to like drink like these protein shakes as I work out in the summertime and the wintertime just to keep my blood sugar up. So I've been dealing that with that ever since middle school. And I do worry about some of these things. Something that I worry about is my esophagus. The, the latest news on my medical history is I learned last summer that my esophagus is like slowly failing because I had that fundo when I was two, um, it only lasts like 25 years. So like when I'm 27, 
it could shut down. And so like, I have two more years with it. Or it could happen like 10, 15 years from now. No one really knows. So, like, I have to, and I have a lot of problems with, like, I do these scopes. And so the, what a scope is, is, like, they go down my esophagus and try to, they work on the opening of my stomach because I get food stuck there and it's really hard to digest and everything. So I do, like, I've done, like, 50 scopes or more in my lifetime because I've done them ever since I was like in grade school till now so I do worry um about that because I'm like well what's gonna happen like am I gonna notice it am I not gonna be able to eat anything or am I gonna choke I don't know but what I um have learned is that I can't control that you know I just have to you know be prepared for when it happens or if it happens and just deal with it because in life you never know what's gonna you know come at you another thing i am worried about um uh is my cerebral palsy how will that affect me when i get older you know i'm already like pretty tight but i'm i stretch a lot and try to keep loose but i don't know how it will affect me because you know, as you get older um you see you know Older people, they have aches and pains. So, will my aches and pains be more severe because I have cerebral palsy? Or will it not affect me if I work out enough? 